Okay, we're live streaming now, and I want to thank my friends for showing up for this uh, comma lesson today. So we're just going to get started. If you want to download my free PDF book on commas, it's called Comma Quandary to Comma or Not to Comma, and you can find it at discerntolearn.com slash product dash page slash commas. And so it's at the bottom. Or if you go to discerntolearn.com and you just search the thing in the search line for comma, you will it'll pop right up for you. So that is kind of a lesson for parents on how to teach about commas. So I just want to invite you as we get started. You're welcome to go get that. You don't need it for today's lesson, but it might help you to remember um, what we learned today as you go forward. And at the end, I have another free resource to share that's not mine, but it's a wonderful resource by Sharon Watson. So comma quandary, why do commas matter anyway? What do you think when you read this? Um, I'm not going to say your names, but when you read this, what do you what do you think? Man, bacon makes everything better. Yep. Mm -hmm. You think so? What what about the second one? What is it? What does the second one mean? Cannibalism. Cannibalism. Man, bacon makes everything better. No, I don't think so. Commas make all the difference and commas matter. So commas are sort of the math piece of language arts because they're black and white. They're mostly right and wrong. And if you are concerned about writing and language arts and you just have trouble getting your mind around, how does this all work and what's right and what's wrong? And if you think it's all subjective, it's really not, okay? Writing can actually be very much like algebra, where you fill in the X, the Y, the Z, and then you end up with this nice piece of writing that comes out at the end. So that's what I want to teach you about today is some of the X, Y, Z pieces of writing. And commas absolutely matter. So what do you think? Where do commas go in a sentence? Where needed, I guess. How do you know when they're needed? When the sentence doesn't make sense without them. Okay. If the sentence doesn't make sense without it, that's a good way. What else? What other way? What other places might commas go? If you need to take a breath while saying something. Okay. So a breath pause. All right, what other answers do I usually get when I ask this question? Do you know what else I get? Where or where, how do you know where to put a comma? Oh, this. I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> I love participating. Um, I'm gonna say this word, but I don't know what it means. When you have a particular clause, Okay, so something to do with clauses. We're going to talk about that. All right, where else do commas go? Any other ideas or what, what might some people think? Commas might go. Or can you think of examples of places where commas go? If you're writing something, it might need a comma. Before a word that is with a different sentence. So oh. say you already wrote a sentence and you're trying to connect it to a different. Word. So to separate Just... sentences. All right. And can we think of any more? Maybe we'll just see my list. Okay. So did you have another one? Yeah, what say like a grocery a grocery list or something that's different altogether, you put a comma before each word. 
A list in a list of things. Okay, what could we list? Do you know we could list objects? What else could we list? Can you think of it? Anything else? People's names. Okay. Are there any other things that can come in lists? Activities. Sorry, what was that? Activities. Okay which might be kind of like names or both nouns. Good, excellent. Well, these are some great ideas. And let's just see what my list was here. Oh, I have to clear my screen. Okay, the thing that I hear most often about commas is that we are supposed to put them where you might breathe. And while it's true that when we're reading out loud, when we come to a comma, we pause and often breathe, we can't choose to put commas in a sentence because that's where we want someone to breathe. So in music, we have breath marks and breath marks are actually, they look like commas and they come like above the staff. So if you do a wind instrument anyways, you have breath marks, you don't have breath marks for the piano. But um, for wind instruments, there are breath marks and that tells you where to breathe. I think sometimes in choir music, there will be breath marks, but we don't put breath marks in writing. We have specific places where we have to put commas. So here is a not complete list, but we have dates, numbers, and addresses. Okay, so you know those are the obvious things we learn in the earliest grades. Then we have lists of things and you were talking about that introductory clauses and phrases and that was brought up we weren't exactly sure where they go and that's perfectly fine compound sentences and maybe you don't know that word but those are the where we connect two complete sentences with a certain kind of connector word in the middle so it's like two train cars with a connector in the middle and a reversed complex sentence gets a comma and we're gonna talk about it today. Hopefully we'll get to that. And then the last three that I have in brackets, we're definitely not gonna to get today, but non-restrictive interjections. So for instance, if you say, um, John, who you know from work, so the who you know from work would go in commas, um, is a good friend of mine. So it's just information that doesn't really matter, okay? If it really, really matters, then it doesn't get a comma, which is kind of strange. And that's why we're not going to it because it's kind of confusing. It's a very advanced skill to know when to put them and when not to put them. Most often we end up just putting them because we're not sure, or students do. Um, a directive interjection. So, hey, Michael, go into the store and get this. So that Michael goes, gets a comma. It's hey, comma, Michael, comma, go to the store and get this and set off direct quotes. And quotations have their whole set of rules. And someday I'll do a class just on quotation punctuation, but not today. So the first place that we have commas are in numbers and dates. And I meant to leave the commas out so you could put, tell me where they go, but I think these are the easiest ones here. So we have um, 1 million is one comma, zero, 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 comma, zero, zero, zero. And I had some teachers who used to prefer them left out. So I'm not sure if that's changing, but that has been the longstanding standard. And in dates, we use commas. So after the day of the week, after the, the number of the date, so June 2nd, comma. So that's how we put it in dates. And even if we use a short form like Friday, F-R-I period, we still put the comma after the period, which is kind of fun. We get to put two pieces of punctuation. And if we were shortening it and not putting the day of the week, it would be June 2nd, comma, 2023. So tell me if you've heard of these before. Is this new to you? What do you think, guys? Is this new to you? No. Nope, it's not new to you. It's pretty, it's pretty standard. It's one of the first things we learn in punctuation. So it's pretty early. Okay, the other places are addresses. So here's some famous addresses. Can you guess what these addresses are? Oh, I guess this one obviously says it's the Empire State Building. You know 221B Baker Street, right? 
Yeah, it's a Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, that's right. And this is how we do the punctuation for that. So you probably know this too, although I'm finding students that now that we don't address envelopes, students are not so sure where to put commas in addresses. So maybe in a letter or in an essay, we might have to talk about the address of something. And we, even when this is in a sentence, we still put the commas in the same places. So after the street name and um, after the state or province, but not, sorry, after the city, but not the state or province and after the zip code or postal code before the country. So that's where that goes. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on those because they're like pretty black and white and I bet they're not new to you either. That's just the basics. But I have to admit, sometimes we all have to check these things, right? So if you need to write an address, you can just Google it and it'll tell you the answer right away. And it's not, it's not difficult to do, it's very black and white. Okay, now we get to the hard part and I'm gonna need you to interact a little bit with me. So please tell me, um, we have lists of objects in this sentence. I went to the store to get apples, oranges, and bananas. Where would we put the commas? Apples and oranges. Uh, so can you just read it? Apples, did you say put a comma here? Yes, ma'am. And then oranges, comma? Yes, ma'am and bananas. All right, exactly. Now, some people do it like this and they do not put one here. And that's perfectly okay too. Nothing like confusing things, right? Where we have to have something that has an option. Okay, the thing is, there didn't used to be rules about punctuation. And then as people were developing rules because they thought it would be a really good idea if we all kind of did this the same, then we could tell whether something was right or wrong or we could understand what people really meant when they wrote. So there became a standard and actually the standard was to not put the comma before the and. So most people didn't put a comma before the and, but Oxford and Harvard got together, the universities of Oxford and Harvard, and they said, no, 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 our students, we want this comma right here. So we have an Oxford comma or a Harvard comma or a serial comma or a final serial comma. It's got lots of names, but that's where we put a comma before the end. I personally put a comma before the end. I have some students who were taught not to put commas before the end. And both of them are right. What really matters is, are two things. First of all, if you have a teacher who cares, you have to do it their way. All right. So if you're writing for a magazine or if you're editing for a newspaper, they will have these rules all set out and they will tell you what rules they follow. And then you just have to do it their way. So I write for a magazine and the magazine I write net for does not use the serial comma, so they, they don't put a comma here. Um, personally, in my writing, I do, but it's different for different places. And the other thing you have to remember is to just be consistent. So if you're writing an essay, make sure it's the same every single time. If you're writing a story, make it the same every single time. So whatever you do, just be consistent. Now, let's talk about the rules. So the rule is, if there are three or more objects in a list, we use the commas between the items. Um, so with the Oxford, Harvard, final serial comma, there is a comma before the end, and the regular comma does not have a comma before the end. Just be consistent. So that's the rule. Super easy. And what if there were only two things? Can you tell me what it would look like then? You, it, the same rules apply. You can either put one before the, I mean, after the apple or not. Ah, actually, this is why the regular comma is, has been considered the standard. Because if I said I went to the store and I bought oranges and bananas, 
I would not put a comma. So if it's a list of two, we just don't use a comma at all. We just put the and in the middle. Kind of strange, hey? Yes, the things that we do. Okay, we have a list of verbs. So we can have a list of objects. So we're talking about the object in the sentence. And we're, so we're not going to go too much into the grammar of that. But the objects are the things that we are getting from the store, right? Or the things that we are taking someplace. I took this, this, and this to the store. So those are still objects. They're objects of the sentence. Here we have the verbs in the sentence. So we're talking about the main action in the sentence. And where would we put the commas here? Dr. Bart Bart, right? and tail. He wagged his tail. Ooh, did I make an error? My dog. Oh, there we go. My dog. I'm sorry. Can you tell me again? After barked and wagged his tail. Yes, very good. And if we use the regular comma instead of the Harvard comma. just after barked, right? So it's pretty easy. And these are almost all of the same, but I have to go through it because one of them is different. All right, so three or more verbs. We use commas between the same thing. It could use the Oxford, Harvard final serial comma or not. And lists of subjects are exactly the same. So we're talking about the subject of the sentence. So what do I mean by subject? And this might be a trick question. What's the subject of a sentence? Any idea? How about I tell you what the subject is not? The subject is not what the sentence is about, okay? The subject of a sentence is the who or what is doing the action or being or having in the sentence. So Matt, Lisa, and Liz, oh, I left a comma in there when I was editing. Matt, Lisa, and Liz went to the store with me. So tell me, besides the comma that I accidentally left in, where else would I put commas in the first one? So. After Lisa. And then in the second sentence, it's good just the way it is because we don't need a comma here, right? And if we only have Matt and Liz going to the store with me, we just don't use any commas. Matt and Liz went to the store with me. So we have exactly the same rules that we do for objects or for verbs. Here's the difference. My fluffy brown dog is excited to see me. Do, does someone want to go out on a limb and tell me where you think the commas go on this one? Because I already told you it's a little bit different than the last one. Is it after dog? It is not after dog because my fluffy brown dog is not an introductory clause, but we haven't got to introductory clauses yet. Any other ideas? Where could it go? What do we have a list of? We have a list of adjectives. What's an adjective? Okay, I'll tell you. An adjective is a word that describes a noun. So in this sentence, dog is the noun. So what words are describing dog? Fluffy. Fluffy. What else? Brown. Brown. How many of those do we have? Just two, right? Mm -hmm. My dog, my fluffy brown dogs. We only have two adjectives there. And here we have old, fluffy, brown, and we have the same noun, okay? Here's the trick. With adjectives, okay, we only, we, there's two things to remember. Normally it's a list of three. But with adjectives, it's a list of two. So we say fluffy, comma, brown, dog, or old, comma, fluffy, comma, brown, dog. The other rule is to never, ever, ever put a comma before the noun. 
So here the noun is dog. So we never put a comma before dog. Do you see that? Because dog's not part of the list. They're just the words describing dog. So for adjectives, it's a list of two or more. And we never put a comma before the noun. So does that seem really complicated? On a scale of one to 10, how complicated is that? Where like one is like so easy and 10 is like, I don't get it. You better teach it again. Uh, four. Four. Okay. What about your brother? Six. Six. Okay. It's pretty hard. Pretty hard. Okay. Then let's talk about it again. All right. Could you give me a sentence that has an adjective in it? So a sentence like this. Can you tell me a sentence like that? We can add adjectives after that's okay too. Mm, how would you describe cheesecake? Three words to describe cheesecake. Uh, I already gave Jojo, my brother, like a couple, but he doesn't want to say them. Okay, well, you go ahead. I love, okay, what kind of cheesecake? Uh, chocolate. Okay. Chocolate, what else? Oreo. Okay, can we describe what the cheesecake is like? I love good, cold, rich, creamy, chocolate, Oreo, cheesecake. You'd never know, but I don't eat dairy but I still miss cheesecake. Okay, I love cold, rich, creamy, chocolate, Oreo, cheesecake. How, okay, first of all, what is the, what is the noun in that sentence? Uh, cheesecake. Cheesecake, right. And what's the verb in that sentence? That's a trick we um, talked about these. Love. Love, and if love is the verb, who is doing the loving? Me. Yeah, I, right? I. So I is the subject of the sentence. Love is the verb and cheesecake is the noun. That would be an absolutely fine sentence on its own. I love cheesecake, period. Right? Nothing wrong with that. But we like so love cheesecake and we want to describe how amazing it is so that someone else can like just taste it by hearing it. So we add all of these adjectives and where do we put the commas? Can you read the sentence and say comma where they go? After cold, rich, creamy, chocolate. Do we put one here? No. Right, why not? Uh, because you don't put one before the noun. You got it. That's exactly right. What if it was, I love chocolate cheesecake? And it's fine on its own. It's fine on its own. No comma required, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. So now on a scale of one to 10, 10 is, yeah, you better teach it again. And one is, yeah, I get it. I could do this. How hard is that? Two. And your brother? One. Oh, there you go. See, we got it. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, I'm going to clear all those drawings. And we're going to move on to the next thing. These are the easy ones. All right. Now we're going to get to the one that mom brought up. Clauses, phrases, exclamations, but it's not that complicated. So I could do a whole hour lesson on this and I could teach you all the grammar and all the words, prepositions and prepositional phrases and subordinate clauses and complex sentences. But here's the little secret. 
You don't actually need all those words and all that grammar in order to edit your sentences. Don't tell. Okay? There are so many people who learn grammar, and grammar's great. I love grammar. I think the grammar is really important. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying if you parents have a student who is really struggling, memorizing all these terms, memorizing all this stuff for grammar, it's my personal opinion that in the long run, in the real world, if they know how to write well, punctuate well, be persuasive and communicate well, that is more important than knowing the definition for a subordinate conjunction. Because when was the last time you used subordinate conjunction in a sentence? I unfortunately have to use it fairly often. <laughs> However, not everybody does. Okay, so here we have, we can start our sentences with words or little phrases that need commas after them. So when in doubt, if you have a little phrase at the beginning and it feels like it's before your sentence starts, I can show you how to figure out whether or not you need to have a comma. So remember we talked about verbs and subjects on the last screens. Can, can you tell me in the first sentence, what is the verb? Wow, have you ever grown? Oh, that's a hard one because it's reversed. Okay. Have is the verb. I'm sorry, I just told you by accident. Okay, have. Who has? You. You, okay. So it's a little confusing because usually the subject is before the verb. So we have the verb and then we have the subject. The subject is you. So really, where is the beginning of this sentence? What word is the beginning? Like it says, wow, but that's just an extra piece, right? The sentence really starts with, have you ever grown? This is extra, this wow part. So you could put a comma here. If you wanna be really fun, you could make it an exclamation mark and just not make it part of the sentence, right? Wow, exclamation point. Have you ever grown? But if you want to make well, it the same yeah. sentence, it would be a comma. So anytime you have like a word at the beginning that comes before the sentence, then you're going to put a comma. You don't always have to know why. You just have to know it belongs there. And some people pick that up by reading, but a lot of people don't pick it up by reading. So let's look at this one. Today I will drink more water. Can you guess where we put a comma? And then we'll see if you're right. What word might be the introductory word or phrase? Have you ever grown? Oh, sorry, second sentence. Oh, um, today. Today, yes, today. Today, comma, I will drink more water. Now, after we guess, we can check to see if we're right. What is the verb in that sentence? Drink. Mm, drink is part of the verb. It's a verb phrase. I will drink. Okay. Because I drink means right now. I drink. Actually, I drink means I always drink. So I drink water. I will drink water. So I drink water on a regular basis. Today in the future, I will drink more water. So this is just part of the verb. It's just the future future tense, will drink. And who is doing the drinking? I. I, so I is the subject. So we know that this sentence really starts with, I will drink. So this is definitely correct. We put a comma there. What about this one? In a little while, I will walk my dog. Can you guess where the comma goes? I'll. 
After while, good, in a little while. So in a little while is a prepositional phrase. Prepositions are words like today, little while, tomorrow, yesterday, on top of, underneath, beside, tomorrow, besides, someday, anything that tells you where in time or space. And they're a little bit slippery sometimes, but these ones are pretty easy ones. So in a little while, I will walk my dog. I is the subject, will is the verb. So we know that this piece is extra, all right? It is a prepositional phrase opening. If they win, they will go to the finals. Where do we put the comma in that one? And guesses? The word win. After the word win, right. If they win, they will go to the finals. Now this one's a little bit tricky. A lot of people think this is an introductory um, clause. Well, and it is, it's an introductory clause because it is part of another rule that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. So it, they win is a sentence by itself, believe it or not. So if they win is a subordinate clause because we could put it at the end. They will go to the finals if they win. So we're gonna get to that in a minute. So that's just another kind. So these little introductory clauses and phrases you pretty much just start by feeling it and asking yourself, well, is this extra information? And if it is, you put a comma, and then you can check to see if you're correct by finding the subject and the verb and seeing if that comes before it. All right, compound sentences. I know it sounds super hard. Have you ever heard of the fanboys? Yes. Yay, okay, then we are just flying. Okay, so. Do you know what we use fanboys for? I think it says the answer right there. Connect okay. two complete sentences with a coordinating conjunction. Right, fanboys are called coordinating conjunctions. So it's like the train cars, right? You have one sentence and one sentence and the fanboy is the little piece in the middle that just connects them together, okay? so. But we don't have to know the, the words. We just have to remember these words. And the reason I teach this piece first is because when you know these words, then you know the next rule on the next kind of sentence is just if it's not one of these, then it must be something else. So the most important thing to remember with fanboys is just because it's a fanboys, just because it's one of this list, doesn't mean it's working as one. So tell me, um, let's just say, um, let's say my dad's a firefighter. He's not, but let's just say my dad's a firefighter um, and he goes somewhere and he's helping somebody to shovel a bunch of gravel onto the back of their truck. Is he acting like a firefighter? Is he working as a firefighter? Don't think too hard, it's pretty easy. No, he's not. He's not working as a firefighter. Just because he's a firefighter doesn't mean that every job he does is fighting fires, okay? Just because a word is on the fanboys fan doesn't mean that every time you see it, it's working like a fanboys. It's not always a coordinating conjunction. So we use them in different places sometimes. So we're gonna take a look at that. Now, whenever we see a fanboys, we have some questions that we ask ourselves. So I'm gonna come back to this picture in just a minute after we look at a sentence. But the first thing we ask when we see two sentences connected together, we ask ourselves, is this a fanboys? And if it's not, it doesn't get a comma. Period, end of conversation, just done, so easy. Okay, no problem. So, if it duh is a fanboys, then we have to look after the fanboy and we ask ourselves a question. Is there a subject and a verb after the fanboys? If yes, see what I told you it was like math. This is an algorithm. If yes, if there's a subject and a verb, then yes, use a comma. 
If there is not a subject and a verb, there have to be both. If there's not both, then no comma. So that seems pretty easy, but we're going to look at it in a sentence. So let's make up a sentence. Oh dear, don't do that. Let's make up a sentence right now. And we're going to punctuate it right here on the screen. So we need two sentences that we could connect together. Do you want me to make it up or do you have one just burning in your soul? I love pizza. I do not eat cheese. Okay. Is this a complete sentence? The first one, I love pizza. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, I thought I could change one color and I can't. Okay. I love pizza. I do not eat cheese. Is I do not eat cheese a complete sentence? Yes. What word could we stick in the middle from the fanboys to combine these two sentences? But. But. Excellent. Um, we could put but. So as soon as we see a but, okay, what do we have to do? Do you remember? Okay, I'm going to leave my words on the screen. It's going to be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to go back. Okay, so just ignore the blue words. Yes, it's a fanboys. And so then we have to look after it and we ask ourselves, is there a subject? Is there a verb? Okay, so that's what we're going to look for. So we look at the but and we look after the but. So we look over here at the second sentence and we say, is there a subject and is there a verb? What is the verb? Uh, eat. Eat, yeah, eat or do not eat. And who does not eat? I, right? I, I is the subject. So do we have a subject? Yes. yes. Do we have a verb? Yes. Do we need a comma? Yes. Yes, exactly right. No. Yes, we definitely need a comma. So yes, we need to put a comma right there because we look after our fanboys. So that we'll go through that algorithm again. Is it a fanboys? Yes. Look after it. Is there a verb? Yes. Is there a subject? Yes. Yes. Is there a comma? Yes. Yes. So that's how we do it. Okay. Can you tell me the rule? What's the rule? The first question is, is it a fanboy? Right. And then if yes, then look after and look for two things. A subject and a verb. A subject and a verb. If they're both there, if yes, then add a comma. Add a comma. Okay. Have you ever seen it written like this? I love pizza, but do not eat cheese. Have you ever seen a sentence like that? Yeah, yes. all the time. Is that sentence wrong, do you think? Or is it okay? It's okay. It's okay. Do you know what it really is? It is a list of two verbs. I love, but do not eat. Yes, because we can have a list with a but, believe it or not. Okay, so it's two verbs and we don't have a subject on the end because it's the same subject. So it's just a repeated subject. So we look at the but and we say, is it a fanboys? Yes. And then we look after for what two things? A subject and a verb. Right, a subject and a verb. Do we have a subject and a verb? Yes. Nope. We have a verb. Oh, uh, this one, this one we do. 
Ah, yes. I was looking at the previous. Sentence. Oh, yes. The last one. I love pizza, but do not eat cheese. Does not have a subject. It just has a verb. There's no I after. So we have a fanboy. Yes, we do not have a subject. So do we put a comma? No. No. Okay. Was this a little bit harder than the last one? Scale of one to ten. No. How hard is this? Four. Way to go. Two. Other two. Okay. I think you've done this before. So that's awesome. Now, complex sentences. The last ones were compound sentences. Compound means a whole bunch of the same thing put together, right? Like a compound eye of a fly. I'm sure you've seen one of those pictures in science. And this time we're talking about complex sentences, but it's not hard just because it's complex. So a complex sentence is a sentence that has two complete sentences connected together with a conjunction, but it's a special kind of conjunction. It's a special kind of conjunction that makes the second part dependent. It makes it dependent on the first sentence, okay? So, for instance, let's make up a sentence that we could use for this. Oops, we have the same rules again. Okay, complex sentences. Um, how about I do not eat pizza. I do not eat cheese. Okay, what word could we stick in the middle that is not a fan voice? Any ideas? Could we use because? I do not eat pizza because I do not eat cheese. Although I still eat pizza just without cheese. But anyways, I do not eat pizza because I do not eat cheese. Okay. We have one complete sentence at the beginning. Is it a good sentence? I do not eat pizza. Yes. Yes. And I do not eat cheese. Is that a good sentence? Besides yes. the fact, it's very sad. Okay. I do not eat cheese. And it's connected with a connector word, right? This connector word in the middle, is it a fan voice? Nope. What are the fan voice? Do we remember? Four and nor but or yet so seven fanboys once you remember those seven words you don't have to memorize all of the subordinate conjunctions do you want to know how many subordinate conjunctions there are there are 50 common subordinate conjunctions that people use all of the time and then there are a whole bunch of others so do you want to memorize seven words or like 75 words? Oh, so seven. Seven, yeah. If it's not one of the seven, and if it's connecting two complete sentences, it is a subordinating conjunction or acting as a subordinating conjunction, which is all that matters. Okay, do not eat pizza because I do not eat cheese. So we look at the connector word and we say, do you remember the rules? First question, is it a, I think the rules are too easy for you. Is it a fanboys? No. Then what? If it's not a fanboys, do you Is remember? it a fanboys? If it's not a fanboys, then? No comma. No comma, easy peasy. All right, so here's the really cool thing, is these sentences, we can turn around the other way, okay? And we could say, 
because I do not eat cheese, I do, oops, I do not eat pizza, period. Okay. Now, what does it feel like, this sentence? Because I do not eat cheese, I do not eat pizza. Does it seem right? And you know what, for some students, they'll say, yep, seems good to me. But it needs something. Do you know what it needs? You've already done it. It's an introductory Almost. clause. So this piece here is the dependent clause. Because I do not eat cheese is the dependent clause, OK? The because makes it attached to this other part, right? So we can move that to the front of the sentence and we can say, because I do not eat cheese, I do not eat pizza. And as soon as you flip it around, you put a comma there. I know, it's just the way it is. Okay, that's kind of crazy. Do you wanna try one more? Or do you think you had it? I got it. You got it? Okay, scale of one to 10, how hard? Five point four, maybe. Five point four. Okay, what's the hardest part of this? The fact that I wasn't paying attention most of the time. <laughs> okay, that would do it. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you kind of have to pay attention. Um, so that's fair. Thanks for being honest. I do not eat pizza because I do not eat cheese. We do not put a comma because it is not a fanboys. Okay, when we have a fan, when it's not a fanboys. It's not a comma. But when we move this last sentence to the front and we, we turn it around and we reverse it, then we put a comma before we put it the main piece of the sentence. Because the main piece of the sentence is I do not eat pizza. Would it be a complete sentence if I just said, because I do not eat cheese, Is that a complete sentence? No. No, not a complete sentence. Even though it has a subject, even though it has a verb, it's not complete because it doesn't have a complete thought. Because if you hear someone say, because I do not eat cheese, then you ask, why? So what, right? Like, because you don't eat cheese, what? Why, why don't you eat, what is that? What are you telling me exactly? Um, we have to have a complete thought and with dependent clauses, the connector word gets super glued onto that sentence and it never comes off. With the compound sentence, it's just a connector, just stuck in the middle. It's kind of like a plus sign, but, but when you put the other kind, the subordinating conjunctions in, they like attach and they are like on there forever. They get welded and then they have to go with it. They have to move with it. So they actually move to the front of the sentence and compound sentences don't do that. So do you believe me that compound sentences don't do that? Let's take a look and see. Um, what was the sentence that we had for a compound sentence? Um, I like pizza, but I do not eat cheese and we know that we need to have a comma before the but so could we change this around the other way and say but i do not eat cheese comma i eat pizza does that make sense no no we cannot have that kind of sentence so those ones don't turn around only the ones like this turn around, only complex sentences reverse. All right, thank you very much, excellent. You guys are just doing great. Now we're gonna review. So let's look at these pictures and you tell me, when do we need commas? Okay, so look at the pictures and guess, or try to remember, I should say.
What was the question again? Look at the pictures to remind you. We're reviewing. So tell me when do we need to use commas? So when you look at the picture, it's going to give you a hint when we need to use commas. Your listing items. Okay, what a list of what? I even put letters on here. A list of subjects, objects, verbs, and adjectives. Okay. What's the rule for that? Do you remember the rule? Don't put a comma before the adjective. Don't put a comma before the adjective. You see how the A is on the other side of the pencil? It's like different from all the other ones. Yeah, that kind of helps you remember it's different than the other ones. So the adjectives are a list of how many? Two. And all the other ones are a list of three to get a comma. And the adjective never, ever put a comma before the noun. Way to go. You learned that one. All right. OK, is your brother still there? Yeah. Yeah. OK, can you pick a picture and tell me when we put a comma? Um, the, one, the map. The With map. The addresses. Addresses. Oh, can you give me an example of an address? Where would you put a comma in an address? Don't use your address. <laughs> um, can I use Sherlock Holmes again? You bet. Use Sherlock Holmes. Uh, two two one B Baker Street, London. Baker Where does the comma go? Oh, the comma goes uh, before uh, after street. Yep. 221B Baker Street, comma, London. Right. Excellent. And what if you had street shortened to ST? What would the punctuation be? Uh, it, would be a, it would be a period, then comma. Got it. Okay. Back to your. Uh, does mom want to do one? Yes. Go ahead. Tell me again. Okay, do you want to pick one of these? Maybe you want to pick the clauses because that was the one that you weren't sure when we started. Did you learn the clauses, Mom? Yes, let's do the clauses. Okay, that's a little shaking hands one. Introductory words, phrases, and clauses. Can you tell me when we put commas and how we know? It's a hard okay, one. So I, no, yes. Um, I was in and out, so I'm going to, what I'm going to, based on what I remember, the um, in uh, in the clauses we put them when we are. <laughs> is it more uh, conjunctions? Uh, okay, that's the different kind. That's when we flip it the other way. But yeah, you could put it when we have a reversed sentence. We can put it after the subordinate conjunction clause or the dependent clause. We put a comma. That's right. And okay, so the name of the oh so okay so the answer the name of the clauses the independent clauses the subordinate clauses the um the uh golly boys do you want to help her when do we when do we use commas for introductory clauses or words can you give an example so I, I the hard love one, but she was in and out. So I love pizza would be the introductory cl clause, correct? Okay, so yes, you're doing complex sentences. So I love pizza. What's the rest of the sentence? Pizza, uh, uh, soft drinks, comma, and... Uh, what goes good with pizza? Okay. And French <laughs> I love pizza comma. I thought we were, I thought the answer was gonna be the name of the of the clause, but you're saying you're saying give an example of a clause. Yeah, or just when do we use it? So I'll give you the hard one here. Okay, so this hard one is we use commas when we have a word or a phrase at the beginning of a sentence that doesn't really have to be there. So like, wow, comma, or today, comma, or in a little while, comma, or because I can't eat cheese, comma, 
I don't eat pizza. So all of those are examples of different times we have introductory words, phrases, or clauses at the beginning of a sentence that need a comma after. So that one was kind of hard because you had to remember a lot of little bits. Okay. Well, it's to, um, it's to, yes, to that. I forgot that. Well, I, I know that, that it, you can either have commas when you're putting two whole sentences together or, or when, you're, or when the, the phrases are not sentences. They don't make sense by themselves. Okay, when they're reversed, right. Okay, so tell me the fanboys ones, boys. I say he's running to get here because he decided to step away when he shouldn't have stepped away. Okay, um, okay, fanboys are for compound sentences is two complete sentences, right? With one of the fanboys in the middle and how do we know what's the rule? to know if we have to have a comma because fanboys don't always do fanboy jobs. Sometimes they do other jobs. So you have to look uh, You have to look in front of the fanboy for a subject and a verb. You have to look after the fanboy for a subject and a verb. You got it. And if yes, there's a subject and a verb after the fanboy, then what? You put a comma. Got it. And if there is not a subject and a verb after? You don't put a comma. Got it. All right. What about those that melty Rubik's cube? What is that? That's complex sentences. So complex sentences are two sentences connected by what? Do you remember? You don't need the fancy name. A conjunction? It's a conjunction that is not a fanboys. Good. Yes. And so the, we look at the two sentences and we say, those are two complete sentences and there's a word in the middle. So that word in the middle, is it a fanboys? And when we say, no, it's not a fanboys, then what do we automatically know? That it needs a comma? That it does not need a comma. No fanboys, no comma. So I like pizza, but, oh, that's but. Um, I like pizza because it's delicious. So it is delicious is a sentence. I like pizza is a sentence. Because is a connector word, but it is not a fanboys. So it does not get a comma. We don't put a comma before because. Unless we take that last part of the sentence and we move it to the front, then we say, because pizza is delicious, comma, I like it. So if we reverse it, then we use a comma, but only if we reverse it. All right, and the last two at the top, they're super easy, the calendar and the number sign. We put commas in dates and numbers, right? Super easy. Okay, I hope this was helpful today. Did, did, did you learn something new today? Yes. Way to go. And even if it was just review, it was good. I wanna share with you a resource by share, writing with Sharon Watson. And I am not one of her affiliates. She does not pay me to advertise for her, um, but I love her resources. I use all of her textbooks in my courses. And she has this great downloadable ebook, Let's Eat Fifi, commas, word usage, and other goofy essentials of grammar. And it's a pretty inexpensive download, but it has a number of lessons in it for learning grammar and especially for editing with commas. So you can take a look there and see if that is something that interests you. Wanted to pass that Thank on you. because it's a great resource. And you are always welcome to join my Facebook group um, at facebook.com slash groups slash language arts success or check it out also facebook.com slash discern to learn and i would love to share more with you about other things that i offer you can also take a look i have a number of freebies at that website that you saw at the very beginning i'm just gonna flick back to the beginning pop that back up okay right here discern to learn.com Make sure you head on over there and check out the comma quandary and that will basically have the same type of teaching in it for you to teach with your students. So thanks so much for coming to class today. 
I'm glad you learned something and I hope it was a great review. If you're coming later to watch the live, please go ahead and leave questions in the comments. I'd love to have your questions and be able to answer them for you. So anytime you have language arts questions, that's what I'm here for. I'm your language arts expert, and I just want to be here to help parents support them in their journey for language arts for homeschool and beyond. So thanks so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you very much.